Hello everyone, and thanks for tuning into the fifth summer 2024 update from Gaz Weatherly. So here we go again, so I bring you yet more summer data. We are up to update number five now, and uh, this is going to be a March to summer data special, and I shall get out of that for you in a moment. Just say that first. A video I say was our 6 m UK weather forecast. We've also got uh, Gaz Weather's Sunday Roundup coming up for you uh, later on uh, this afternoon. We're going to be live at 6pm. We're going to live stream at 10 to 14 there. And as it's a Sunday live stream, we're going to have some long range in that as well. So, uh, an epic day of content here at Gaz Weather's Web Web today. Please like, share and subscribe on all of today's videos of content. And thank you so much everybody for doing that. Thank you so to Richard for our amazing, amazing, amazing summer updates gift number one. Not two summer updates gift this uh, season. And uh, thank you so much to Shrian as well. This is a Shrian Brewing uh, photo that's been turned into a gift by uh, Rich. So hashtag Team Gav as ever working away for us. Thank you so much to Shrian and also to Richard for our uh, summer updates gift number one. Unbelievable, amazing. Thank you so much, both. And a thank you so much to Shrya for uh, sorting out all of the years for us as well for this uh, summer update. Right, well, I reckon we're going to do this. How does that sound? So, as I say, it's going to be a March data special. We're going to start off with the seating. Oh, uh, well, the centering temperature for March 2024 came out at 8.1. That's two and a half degrees above 61 to 19.90. Average of that places March 2024 within the <laughs> top 10. All right. <coughs> So, sorry, everybody. That place is March 2024 within the uh, top 10 warmest uh, marches for the seating. And so, very simply, you know, we love the countdown here at Gas Weather. Do, 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 do. So, um, very simply, we are going to be looking at summers following the uh, top 10 warmest marches. So, why don't we do that then? Here we go, pop picker. Do, 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 So at number 10, the 10th warmest March for CT is 1981. The summer of 1981 has an area of high pressure over to the west of the country, trough low pressure away to the northeast. This is a relatively unusual combination of a cool and dry summer. So, we have high pressure blocking off the Atlantic. There's a lot of dry weather through this summer. Um, but also, if winds often coming from a west northwest direction, temperatures are uh, tend to be quite cool, particularly so, I think, in July of 1981. August does get a little bit warmer, but overall, a cool, dry summer to start us off. At number nine, we've got 2019. So, uh, the summer of 2019 has high pressure to our east, so low pressure is out to west. Therefore, we often bring up the wind from the south, so we do get a phenomenal heat wave in July of 2019. But it's also a very mixed summer uh, as well, so a sort of quite regular heat spikes, but also lots of unsettled and significantly cooler weather as well. A little bit of everything in the summer of 2019, but we can't overlook that very, very hot spell of weather that we had during July. I mean, just a couple of days later, it was uh, really cold and pouring with rain. At number eight, we've got 2002. So the eighth warmest March is uh, 2018. Summer 2002 is rather mixed, but relatively warm. Low pressure in the North Atlantic and through West Europe. Higher pressure is towards Scandinavia. So often with this summer, Ah, uh, it's unsettled, but there is warm weather in there as well. It's quite a warm and humid summer, but uh, only has one real heat wave, which happens at the end of July 2002. Oh, wow, 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 wow! Who's that? Questions, questions, questions. Do, do, do. Who is that? Who is that? Who could it be? 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 I don't know. Do you? Yes, it's 2024. Oh, the seventh warmest March is uh, 2024. 
And, uh, well, we've got the questions to answer there, haven't we, Pop Picker? Do, 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 do. So, um, yeah, you know, that's what we're here for. We're trying to answer those questions. What will the summer of 2024 have in store? You're going to find out at the end of May. At number six, well, we'll read some gas when we summer forecast, of course. At number six, we've got 1961. Uh, this is a rather cool and uh, unsettled summer. With lots of low pressure to our north, but also some high pressure out to west, but very Atlantic driven summer in 1961. Right, the top five now. At number five, we've got 1990. This is quite a hot summer. It starts off a bit dodgy, going with low pressure in the Atlantic, high pressure down to our southwest, and also there's some high pressure to the northeast. It's an analogue, but doesn't really tell you a great deal about the summer. So, June 1990 is quite cool and wet. But it very quickly picks up through July, culminating in an explosive heat wave late July and into August of 1990, where we get 37 degrees. <coughs> so it's again, but get 37 degrees for the first time. At number 12 in recorded history, at number 12, we've got uh, 2000. No, what am I talking about? At number four, we've got 2012. Um, so, this one, it's one of the worst summers of this century so far. Up there with 2007. They're the two worst summers, I think, for um, 21st century so far. Um, so, this one, a strong northern blocking signal. Lots of low pressure in the Atlantic into Northern Europe as well. Uh, so jet stream down here somewhere. If it can go wrong, it does go wrong. It's a washout suburb. It just rains from beginning to end through June, July, and through most of August too. All this is slightly better, maybe. But overall, it's a very, very bad summer that we have in 2012. And it follows on from the fourth warmest March for the CT. Right, top three. We've got 1990 at number three with uh, low pressure to the south. And let's change the colour. High pressure is over Scandinavia. That leads to us bringing in an easterly wind. So this is an easterly summer. And it starts off cool and wet, very wet, in June of 1997. But again, it picks up as it goes along. It does have a very hot August, actually, but also a very wet August, so hot and thundering for August 1997. Overall, that's another very warm or hot 1990s summer. At number two, we've got 2017. It's a classic front-loaded summer. Oh, it has high pressure uh, to the south, low pressure is to the north. What you don't get from the analog is, but you have a very, or we had uh, a very warm, really quite hot June. Then it gets progressively worse and has a cool and wet August in 2017. And then at number one, the warmest March from CT remains 1957. Um, and this one is a cool, wet summer. Again, quite front-loaded. Starts off mainly dry and uh, very warm, even hot at times, in June of 1957. I think June 1957 contains the uh, hottest day, uh, you know, hottest days of the summer. Uh, then it gets progressively cooler and more unsettled as it goes on. It gets progressively worse, if you uh, like. So, uh, very much a front-loaded summer in 1957. Right, let's put, all, let's put all of that together then and see how all Junes combined are coming out following the top 10 warmest marches despite uh, 2017 and 1957. Overall, putting, putting all of the years together is actually a cool and wet signal for those um, uh, Junes. So as ever, you'll get years but deviate. So yes, we do have 2017 in there, which was a very warm hot, uh, dry uh, June generally, but overall, putting it all together, actually quite a cool wet signal for those uh, Junes. All Julys combined look like that, similar to 1981, interestingly, with higher pressure out to the west, lower pressure to the east, so that's a dry signal for the Julys, but a little bit on the cool side, with winds in from more of a northwesterly or northerly type direction. And then the August, probably the best of the summer months. Again, there are years of deviating. 2017 has a cool and wet August. But overall, putting it all together, August tending to have a stronger 
higher pressure signal. So uh, the warmest, driest weather, perhaps in the August, indicating something of a backloaded summer being favoured here. And uh, this is how all summers combined are looking following the top 10 warmest Marches. Overall, an unsettled still, that is primarily down to the Junes. Of course, it is the summer, uh, uh, well, these are summers that are tending to get uh, drier as uh, we go along, potentially. Right, so that's the first set of analogs done. We'll uh, crack straight on now with the second set. And uh, this time, we're going to be looking at England and Wales precipitation for uh, March. So, England and Wales P for uh, March 2024 came out at 111.5 Point five millimeters, which was one hundred and seventy percent of uh, the average. That again does indeed place March twenty twenty four within the top ten wettest marches for England web precipitation. And so, as you know, we love a <laughs> we love a countdown at Gas Web. Yes, pop pickers, we're going to do another countdown. So this time we're counting down summers following the top 10 wettest marches. Why don't we do that? Not all. So at number 10, we have got 2008. And this has a strong northern blocking signal up towards Greenland with low pressure across the northwest Europe out into the Atlantic. A cool and wet summer in uh, 2008 at number 10. At number 9, we've got 1982. This was slightly dry. It has a very wet June, but I think then it uh, gets a little bit dry. Quite a warmish summer, this one, uh, with low pressure to the south and the west. Uh, a little bit of a ridge up to the north as well. That's quite a humid uh, summer. It gets drier after a wet June. At number 8, we've got 1988. This is a really bad summer, particularly bad in July, actually. Trough of low pressure covering the North Atlantic and Western parts of Europe as well. It's one of the worst Julys of the uh, 20th century. And June and August aren't much to write home about either. So, a uh, really bad summer there at number eight. At number seven, we've got 2001. This is quite an unsettled summer, but it's often warm. So, it has low pressure to the north, higher pressure down here. So, it is a mixed summer. It's quite a wettish summer as well. But it does have regular warm intervals, particularly in July and August. Regular, you know, just one, two day you know, heat waves, a couple of five days, and a thunderstorm type summer, really, in uh, 2001, but often a little bit unsettled. Oh! 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 There he is, Gam! It's Gam trying to answer those questions. I don't know. So, yes, at number six, the sixth wettest March was 2024. Um, actually, by the way, <laughs> and so, uh, summer, uh, 2024 is going to be at number six, trying to answer those questions, and, uh, we shall see, we shall see, we shall see, we shall see, <laughs> here we sat, I don't know, <coughs> so sorry everyone, at number five, we've got 2018, this is a really good summer, so this is perhaps the best summer that we've seen so far in Iber set. It's 2018 with high pressure ridging in from the Atlantic into Western and also Northern Europe. The low pressure, where's the low pressure? Well, that is tucked away up over Greenland and into the Arctic. The jet stream is up here somewhere. So very hot, very dry through June and July anyway, particularly hot in July. 2018, it does wobble in August, so one of those summers that we get quite a lot, you know, often, that uh, that um, we get to August and things go a little bit down the tubes, but having said that, uh, you know, it has a very, very hot, uh, hot and dry July in uh, 2018. At number four, we've got 1951, so this is just a very cool and wet summer with lots of low pressure in the North Atlantic and across Northern and Western Europe as well. And then at number three, 
<laughs> We've got 1979. This sun again with low pressure to our northern east. Higher pressure is out in the Atlantic. And we bring wind in from the northwest. That's quite a cool and unsettled zone. But it does have some warmer days mixed in. At number two, we have got uh, 2003. Last year was the second wettest March for England and Wales precipitation. This summer's a bit mixed. So, again, low pressure in off Atlantic into West Europe. Higher pressure is up here. The thing with this summer is that um, it has a... When you don't get it from the analog, it does have a very hot and dry June. But when that breaks into July and August, then the summer very much goes down the pan. Um, <laughs> say the least. And then at number one, the uh, wettest uh, March is 1981. So we're back where we started for our final analog year. It's the summer of 1981, following the uh, wettest March for England Wales precipitation, with high pressure out to the west, low pressure to our northeast, and winds again coming in from the northwest. So a cool and dry summer in 1981. Interesting map we've come full circle and gone back to where we started with 1981, isn't it? So finally, let's just put all of that together. This is how all Junes combined are looking following the uh, top 10 wettest marches. Completely different to the CT uh, June. Top 10, you know, all Junes combined from CT. This time for the wettest Junes, um, we have high pressure dominating. So a warm it's actually very warm, even hot, dry signal for uh, the Junes. All Julys combined, much cooler and much more unsettled. High pressure pulling out into the Atlantic, low pressure digging in across the north and the west of Europe. And then all August combined, check this out following the top 10 wettest marches, tending to be very unsettled. Low pressure in the North Atlantic, into West Europe, high pressure pulled out into the Atlantic, a cool, potentially very cool and wet signal for those uh, August, in complete contrast to the first set. So not very often it works out like this, but we do like two sets, and one set has a strong signal one way, and the second, second set has a strong signal the opposite way. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not sure how useful these analogs are really, to be to be honest, because they're totally the opposite, you know, when we come to put them all together. Uh, this is how all summers combined are looking following the top ten wettest marches. Overall a cool and unsettled signal for these summers with low pressure in northwest Europe, high pressure it's out of the Atlantic. We do get a Pretty decent signal for June, and then it all goes down the tube. So the first set was vaping like a backloaded summer with uh, a cool wet start and then getting better by August. The second set favouring a front-loaded summer with the driest, warmest weather in June at start of summer and then getting progressively cooler and wetter. So as I say, how seriously uh, we take these uh, analogs, I'm not sure how much shoes they're going to be when we can do the summer forecast. We shall see. But there we go, everybody. We are done with our fifth summer 2024 update. Quite entertaining. Hopefully, that one. If you have enjoyed the fixed summer update, please do like, share, and subscribe. We're going to be live streaming at 6 pm. So, if you've got any questions about this, I'm sure you're going to be scratching your head like I am about how they can be so conflicting and contrasting from the two sets. Um, no, anyway, if you've got any con uh, questions about this, then please fire away on the uh, live at 6 pm. Between now and then, uh, we've got Gareth's Web is Study Roundup coming up for you, and that should be probably about 1 2 ish this afternoon. Thank you so much to Richard and to Ryan for all the help on this fish so update hashtag team go did an incredible job for us as always we're going to be back with more summer updates for you next week and right way through to the end of may but for this one for the fish summer 2024 update that's all now and thank you so much for watching bye for now and see you later on for our live stream bye for now